Put me on the Celestine prophecy. Nothing here is stopping me. Consciously or bodily, low energy don't bother me. Love is my priority. So my vibrations 444 sonically. My brain working out. Meditation, my cardio. They hit it from us in the books. You provided the audio. Audio. Welcome to another episode of Mental Wealthness, a Black Fly on the Wall show. I'm get, I'm here with you all today um, to discuss an amazing topic with an amazing person. Um, establishing boundaries and expectations. Uh, I have the lovely Miss Corvea here. Corvea, introduce yourself to the people. Already. <laughs> Corvea, um, first and foremost, I'm a daughter, a sister, um, a titi. I have a bunch of nieces and nephews. Nice, nice. A friend, of course. Um, secondary, though, I'm a career woman. Nice. I've uh, been in media for the last 13, 14 years. Okay. Um, and take a lot of pride in that. Work really hard um, in that. And so, yeah, that's me. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Uh, and I brought Corvea in today to discuss, um, you know, she's had success in the media industry. Um, she's had success in reality TV. Um, she's just a dynamic woman, you know, and I think uh, we always looking for opportunities to um, have dynamic conversations with dynamic people and to provide listeners with a different perspective about things related to expectations, re relationships, spirituality, mm -hmm. finances, mental health, and mental wellness. Our whole goal is to fuse mental health and financial literacy to provide like a well-balanced meal of what it is to be an individual, um, what it is to be an individual that is that focuses on their mental health, that focuses on their finances. Right. And, but it's also important that uh, we tap into conversations about like about boundaries, about right. expectations and what that looks like. Um, so with you in media and you working, you mind who I tell you, say who you work for? Oh no, I don't mind. Okay. At all. So you work, for, you work for revolt. <laughs> um, and as a businesswoman that is progressing through her field, um, is it oftentimes a challenge for you to establish boundaries um, between your work life, your personal life, and as you're progressing through those, through your journey? No, actually, but that's that's a choice. It used to be really hard. When I, I, I feel like I stress myself out, and a lot of people do this. I was one of those people. We stress ourselves out by trying to separate our professional life and our mm -hmm. personal life. Mm -hmm. I decided I don't want to deal with that stress anymore. I don't do it anymore. Nice. So what did that look like for me? That meant I had to leave a company, right? I had to find another place that I could call home, that I could be my true authentic self. I was tired of going to work and not being able to show up like myself. For sure. So I had to, you know, take a step back and start over. Um, and it's really about designing, designing your life, mm -hmm. like designing you know, your life based on what's in alignment with what you got going on, what feels good, what's the right energy. And I think that once you do that, setting boundaries is easy because now you're just focused on like your your well-being, how you feel, what's I mean, what's internally. right in for your sure. spirit. For sure. Um, so it's not it's not hard for me to set boundaries at all. And I don't I don't separate my professional and my personal life too much. I mean, there's still an element of like, OK, this is work mm -hmm. and this is home. Mm -hmm. But in terms of how I show up, you're going to get me in like every room. What what challenges did you have early on um, in your career? Um, because, you know, it's, it's natural to go through these phases and these journeys of trying to find yourself and try to find, like, what is the best design for me? What is the best balance for me? And, and how did I do that? What were some of the challenges that you experienced? So imagine that you're talking to a young girl that's coming up in media, fresh out of college. What are some of the things that you would mentor them on when it comes down to expectations and boundaries? Honestly, asking yourself the right questions. You know, a lot of a lot of the choices that we make are based on how we feel, what we think of ourselves, mm -hmm. how we feel about ourselves. And so we have to ask ourselves the right questions to get the answers that we need to like move maneuver and move through. So absolutely. In terms of setting expectations for, let's say, a young girl is setting is trying to create expectations about what her next job will look like. Mm -hmm. She has to first ask herself questions. Who do I want to be having lunch with? What mm -hmm. type of people do I want to mm -hmm. be in the office with? What brings light to my life when I'm doing it? What mm -hmm. makes me happy? Then you, you choose a, a, a job based on that. That's how you create healthy expectations. When it comes to boundaries, I think again, 
thinking about how you feel internally. What is your spirit like? How is your spirit feeling? And based on that, what is a no? And mm -hmm. what is a yes? Mm -hmm, those sure. no's, those are the boundaries right there. Whatever doesn't feel good, you you create boundaries around that. I like it. I like mm -hmm. it. And two, I think also it's like, you know, we work really hard and we come through college and it's like, boom, you go into the, the workforce. Right. And it's like the wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. You know, like interning and all of those things can't prepare you for what you're going to experience in the real world. No. It's, I mean, it helps. Yeah, a little but bit. But it's not going it it's it's, to give you the blueprint. It's not synonymous. No. No, it's not. It's not synonymous. It's not. So it's important for us to have the mentorship, to have the, those, that groundedness, mm -hmm. I would say. Being able to be grounded in yourself yeah. and know within yourself of what you want. And kind of have a vision. I think one of the most uh, one of the most beautiful things about being younger, and I remember whenever I was younger and starting my career, is that you don't know, and you haven't been exposed to much. Right. So you're not jaded. You're pure. You're pure. You're pure. So you yes. coming in, you bright eyed, bushy tail. You like, oh, yes. I help with this. I yes. jump on but that. But the the trick, the key is, the key is mm -hmm. for real, for real. I'm so glad you said that. The key is not losing that. Mm. You have to keep that. How for do you me, keep it? There have, been, there have been so many times where I'm fearless. I jump off the cliff and I'm like, I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. mom, or I'm going to do this. And mm -hmm. I do it and then I'm rejected or I, I'm hit with myself. I realize maybe I'm not as good as I thought I was in this mm -hmm. area or I'm not as sharp or there's some room for, for improvement. I have to make sure I get back up and have that same like joy about doing something new Absolutely. again. And I think that's what's, what has gotten me through my career so far. I mean, in media, I've been fluid in my career. I've worked in radio. I've worked in TV. I've worked in blogs when blogs started popping off. Mm -hmm. I was in um, um, traditional journalism, mm -hmm. so working for newspapers. Now I'm on the business side of things in marketing. I never knew my career would go here, but I had to stay fluid. Mm -hmm. And I think the key is flexibility, being flexible, be being fluid, and making sure you don't lose that that joy that you have, that that creates that like fearlessness for you to do something new, try something new, start over. That's so important. Nice. And, and with you, especially with you, um, you know, I was, I'll say all of us are young, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we're all excelling through our careers at the level that we see ourselves excelling at. Um, what level has visualization seeing yourself in the role that you're in now, seeing yourself as a leader, seeing yourself as a pioneer in the field of media at a large company that's black owned, uh, what what kind of visualization have you experienced in the past that positions you in the position that you're in right now? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. I used to live back in 2016. I lived in a city called West Palm Beach. Okay, I yeah, had never sure. heard We're of familiar, West Palm Beach sure. personally. <laughs> I literally had never heard of West Palm Beach, but I um, was um, I was selected through a program um, for placement at a media company, but that media company owned multiple um, stations, TV okay. stations and radio stations in okay. different cities. I was assigned to West Palm Beach. So they're sending me to West Palm Beach and I'm like, West Palm Beach, I've never been. I don't know what that mm -hmm. is. I've never been. And I get there and what a humbling experience because it was a beautiful city. I had everything together. I mean, I had everything I needed. But it was so quiet, right? I didn't know anybody in the, in town. I didn't know anybody I worked with. I was the only, one of the only people of color. I was the youngest in the room. Okay. And I was put in a leadership position. Okay. And, you know, I'm having to assign tasks and manage people who are older than me, who've been in the industry longer. And it was such a challenge for me because I'm thinking, you know, I, I'm usually the type of person I'm respecting my elders. Mm -hmm. I'm not speaking unless I'm spoken to. I'm staying quiet about things, but I have to really step into this leadership role and be confident in that they need to do what I'm asking them to do because I've thought it through. I'm strategic. I think big picture. Like I had to believe that I had the skills, mm -hmm. right? So because Faith. it was so, yeah, because it was so challenging, I would go out. I lived on the water at the time. I would go out to the intercoastal and which already was just like an experience for me because I'm a city girl. Mm -hmm. um, but I would go on the water and I would sit there in silence for a while. I will watch the boats go by and I would take out a piece of paper and I would not use any words because I can use words. I can <laughs> talk my way through something. I can right. write my way through something. I can. I'm a wordsmith. Right. But I would challenge myself to get a, a blank piece of paper and I would just draw photos of mm -hmm. what I wanted my life to look like. I could not use any words. And when I would draw photos, I saw myself drawing things like 
a table, but a table, I would ne- it would never be one stick person at a table. I would draw like a bunch of stick people at a table. I would draw like a stack of books. And when I would look at that, that little image that I drew, to me that meant I'm at a table, so there's collaboration. Okay. There's knowledge because there's a bunch of books on the table. We don't know who wrote them or what type of books they are, mm-hmm. but there's books. Um, and that comes to mind first because I remember thinking if knowledge is, is, is in play and collaboration is in play, that means that it's okay if there are people on my team that are smarter than me. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's preferred. I want to mm-hmm. learn from you. I want you to Absolutely. learn from me. Absolutely. And... I can't be a leader if I'm not collaborating with people. If I'm not a people person, I can't lead people. Mm -hmm. So I really think that just that small picture of what I was visualizing at the time changed my perspective on what being a leader was. And once I started putting that into play, I saw myself um, managing other situations and more Mm -hmm. people and just getting those opportunities to really Make plays. Seven Twelve Vodka, distilled only once from Blue Ridge Mountain water, alkaline and gluten free. Seven Twelve Vodka is perfect for sipping or mixing when you want to enjoy the finer things in life. Serve up Seven Twelve Vodka and reflect with us on the happenings that have made you who you are. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Visualization is key, man. It is. I feel like, you know, we as... Real visual... Like, you really... It's it a is, real... You really have to visualize you, it's, it's the thing. Mm-hmm. It's 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 just not. It's just not thinking about what you want. It's actually seeing yourself doing it through your right. mind's eye. Right. See, we always live in an observational reality to where we're observing a lot. Mm-hmm. So, like, even though we have these eyes and we're looking through these eyes, we're also looking at other things and observing how the world is operating and how people are experiencing success, right. experiencing loss, experiencing grief, experiencing joy. We're observing those things. So a lot of times when we visualize, we're looking at it from an observational lens. Mm-hmm. We're seeing ourselves literally hovering over ourselves doing the thing. Right. Whereas you're supposed to be seeing yourself through your mind's eye doing yeah. that thing. So I have a, um, I made this, it's, I call it a, a gold tracker, but I made this gold tracker available to people. So it's on my website right now. Nice. But it's a gold tracker that basically I pose questions for you to answer because a lot of people, when they're giving advice about, reaching success or achieving success, they're always telling you to set goals and achieve them, but they're not teaching you how to identify those goals. That's Mm -hmm. where people get stuck. They don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. They don't know where they see themselves in five years, Mm -hmm. where they, where they see themselves in two years or where they see themselves in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And when they think about what they want, now they don't know how, what goals do they have to achieve to get there? True. So in this goal tracker, I pose questions that allow you to visualize what your life looks like. And then you set goals around that. Okay. So one of the questions on the goal tracker is like, who do you have lunch with once a week? That's a big question. That's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, you got to spend time with someone once a week. This is two to three hours of your time every week. Who do you want that person to be? That person damn well better be someone that's influential. And valuable. That pours into you. That's valuable and Mm -hmm. someone you can learn from, right? Mm -hmm. So when you can visualize yourself sitting at a table with this particular person, now you can think, okay, if I'm the type of woman that's having lunch with that type of woman every week, now I can think about, well, what what qualities does that woman have mm-hmm. that's sitting at the table with that other woman? So mm-hmm. if that person for me was Michelle Obama, it's like now I have to show up as someone who's worthy, right? Of engaging Who, in that conversation. Of engaging in that conversation. So it Michelle then makes Obama. you accountable of your actions that get you to that point. 100%. Then you set goals from there. Mm, nice. And I think visualizing things like that really, um, really help. When you're thinking about, you know, who am I right now? Who do I want to be? And what goals do I have to achieve to, like, reach that that place in my life? I like it. And, and two, I think, too, that goes hand in hand with the boundaries that you set because your boundaries can either be small or they can be large. Yeah. So, it's, but you have to set some type of bound, boundary because things are boundless, but it's all about the limitations that you place on yourself. Yeah. I was just telling my little sister that, um, 
limitations only exist based on how we create them. So, so the bar is only as high as, as high as you set it. So, so if you set the bar here, that's what you would achieve. If you set it high, that's what you will achieve. Right. But it has to be in proportionate to the actions and the mentality that you have that is synonymous with the high bar. So we have to maintain that we we have to make sure that we're maintaining large boundaries mm -hmm. so that we can maximize our truest potential to achieve what we want to achieve. So true. It reminds me of like the koi fish. I think the koi fish. Yeah, I think it's mm -hmm. a Japanese fish. Yes. Um, you know, they grow based on their environment. Yes. So if they're in a small pond, mm -hmm. they stay a, a certain size. Now, mm -hmm. if they go into a bigger pond, they get bigger. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of that because you are, you know, you are what you what you imagine for yourself, yes. what you think about, you really are. Yes. And when we talk about boundaries and you say boundless, my word for 2022 was boundless. I like it. It was life changing. It was after um, I was listening to a conversation with Joey Badass and... I forget who else, but he was talking about how people were keeping him in this box of being a rapper. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up winning awards mm -hmm. for his acting mm -hmm. and how he kept trying to explain to people that his art is his art. Mm -hmm. I am my art. You cannot limit me to an album. You cannot limit me to a movie. You cannot limit me to a film or a TV show, whatever. And for whatever reason, I heard that conversation at the right time. I was deeply inspired by it. And I said, you know what? My word for this year is going to be boundless. So I've been moving with that. Um, and then for 2023, you know, we, we women, right? We have our vision board parties and for sure. we're trying to like come up with our for words sure. for the year. And they're for like, sure. Correa, what's your word? And I'm like, you know what? 2022 was great. Mm -hmm. And my word was boundless. And I lived by that. I'm, if it's not broke, don't, I mean, yeah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Carry it right? right on. So with 2023 being the year of me being balanced, I think of that as I'm not limiting myself, but more importantly, I'm not allowing others to limit me either. Mm -hmm. um, there's no, you introduce me as someone who's dynamic. I love that word. Mm -hmm. There are many layers. Mm -hmm. There are many, many layers to myself, to mm -hmm. you, to people we come across Absolutely. every day. And I think, the more layers you have, the more dynamic you are, the better. It does become a little challenging because, yes, you do have to create boundaries, mm -hmm. right? You have to set expectations. I can't just be any... Now, if I'm boundless, it doesn't mean that I'm anywhere all the time with anybody and I'm just doing anything. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what I achieve and what I reach and what my life looks like, I can't even imagine it. Your boundaries are boundless. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, like, that's what your boundaries are. They're boundless. Yeah. Like, you know... You don't, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not tapping in or encouraging self-limiting behavior. And you're also uh, making sure that you're maximizing everything that you can possibly be. Right. And really too, I think it's also, I like the fact that you offer the journal because um, as the more and more you write, the more and more you learn about yourself. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Because it's so yes. easy to download things in this world right. and just tuck them away. Right. As you progress throughout life, you experience these things, whether they're good or bad, you download them and you tuck them away. You yep. download them and you tuck them away. Well, whenever you journal, that's your unpacking. Yep. That's your process of unpacking and really, really uh, allowing yourself to manifest who you really are. A lot of times, like when I journal, that's my moment of um, becoming one with self. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On Like when I meditate, I'm one with self. But when I'm journaling, that's... That's, yeah. that's getting really, really you know personal. What, what, I, what I think we don't talk about enough is you have to read what mm -hmm. you're writing. Yes. You have to go back to your journal entries, mm -hmm. to your notebooks, to your notes mm -hmm. and read it and yes. read it and read it because we're, so, we're consuming so much on a daily basis. So when you're journaling and you're one with yourself, right, that's a passing moment mm -hmm. at this point. You might journal for 30 minutes on a mm -hmm. Thursday and don't open that journal for another three weeks or don't read what you there wrote you three weeks ago. Right. You have to because you've consumed so much by right. that time. You need to go back to that moment where you were with yourself and and read what you were thinking, what choices you wanted to make, mm -hmm. what what conclusions you came to, whatever it is that you're you're writing down. Read it and reflect on it. Reflection is like so important to, to like your well being. It allows you to see where you were, yeah, and then where you want to be. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm also. Have you seen the? I'm sorry. Have you seen the? Pamela Anderson documentary by chance. Uh -uh. She has, she is actually really intriguing. She has bins of journals and what better way to tell a story than to have yeah. 
the Netflix documentary crew go through your journal. She was like, you know what? I don't even want to talk through some of these things. I've reflected on it already. I've moved on. A lot mm -hmm. of those things were painful mm -hmm. for her to read over. Mm -hmm. So she gave Netflix and that and that squad full access to her journals, and wow. they use that to tell her story. What wow. better way? She documented wow. all it. So at all those moments where she was one with herself, those were her pure emotions, her pure thoughts. I'm definitely gonna check that out. And and I mean, I like it. We've seen it. We've seen this something like this before. I mean, Pamela is Pamela, but we've seen something mm -hmm. like this before. But even when we think about Maya Angelou, Dr. Angelou, I mean, she would yes. go into hotels. And spend two nights in a hotel and just write. Mm -hmm. And some of those things became, you know, published works. Mm -hmm. But she was able to to tell her story through words. So, like, journaling is like extremely that. important. And, too, I'm a, I'm a major advocate for this. Every, every successful company has a mission statement. Yeah, yeah. It can be a sentence or it can be four paragraphs. Right. But I'm a big advocate of what's your mission statement for your life, yeah. for yourself. What have you written for yourself that says you are so and so? This is where you're going. This is where this is your purpose. Um, these are your expectations your for guide. yourself, mm -hmm. and that's your guide. And you read that on a daily basis because it consistently reminds yourself of the direction you're supposed to be yeah. going. You know, like it can act as your GPS. Yeah. You know, you want to get somewhere in an efficient way that you've never been before. Use a GPS. Right. It's no different than um, a ship that leaves the port. It has to set itself on a course so that it has a framework that is operating within, operating in to get to a specific destination. Mm -hmm. And we as individuals have to create that framework for ourselves. As James Clear talks about in Atomic Habits, it's all about, um, it's all about idealizing what the framework and enhancing your framework, mm -hmm. meaning the way that you go about and do things in life versus your goals. Right. Because a lot of times we can go back and look at our goals and see how many goals have not been achieved, see how many things that have not been even tapped into or even initiated. Right. But if you create a framework, because you listen to these interviews of Robert F. Smear, the Robert, Robert F. Smith, the, the richest black man mm -hmm. in the world, you listen to the ditties, you listen to all of these individuals, they have a framework of how yeah, they do things. For sure. They have and that a framework structure. can change. Yeah, they, they can yes. change and they have as a structure. you evolve. Right. Yeah, they have a structure of how they go about life. Mm -hmm. Whether that's mentality, whether that's diet, whether that's spirituality, whether that is philosophy and ideology of how they perceive life. Right. But you operate within a framework and you create that mission statement for yourself so that you can make sure that you're consistently moving yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, I, I that is so true. I have a framework for my own life. And that's why I said it can change because I've seen my framework change mm -hmm. as I've You evolved. can add to it. Right, you can add to it, you can take away you can from addendum it. it. <laughs> I've never called it a framework, though. I've read Atomic Habits, but I've never called it a framework. For me, it's just like a code. Mm -hmm. I have a code that mm -hmm. I live by. No one has to understand it. No one has to like it. It's not for them. It's not for them. It's for me. This is a code. So a lot of, a lot of my yeses and nos, you know, my boundaries, my expectations, the choices that I'm making, they stem from that code. Mm -hmm. That's at the core of who I am, and my code is made up of what I've learned growing up from what I've seen, but it's also everything I've unlearned. It's also things that I've poured into myself knowledge-wise. So what I've read, what I've experienced, what I've learned through mistakes, what I've learned through other people, what I've learned through reading books, watching film. And, you know, I continue to add to that code or take away from it. And every, every decision, every decision stems from that. I like it. So how do you, so that's in regards to business. Do you take those same principles and apply them to relationships? Mm. Or is it a challenge to do that? <laughs> it is because, you know, I think about the question like, you know, it, it's almost like when it comes to my career, I got it down packed. Easy. I, I got it down packed. You, you I got clicking. this. Okay. Boom, boom, and boom. even though I'm not firing where, on all cylinders. Even though I'm not where I want to be. But your trajectory be, shows you where I have you a be. path. I right. have a trajectory. Right. I right. have um, right, right, right. I have a blueprint, I have a plan, right? Right, right? When it comes to my love life and relationships, mm -hmm. I don't have that down pat. What do you think that is? I don't. You know, I remember I remember one year, and again, this is New Year's coming, what's your word, mm -hmm. what's your goals, mm -hmm. what's your vision, what's your intention for the new year? And I remember sitting down and I had just finished reading a book about Warren Buffett and one of his, a, a piece of his fr framework, let's say, was 
he would focus in on a handful of goals for 10 years, whereas we're creating new goals every three weeks, every mm. three months. We're creating new goals. Mm. His framework was you choose these goals and you focus on them for the next five to 10 years. So I sat down and I wrote down all my goals mm -hmm. and it was like 25 things. And I narrowed it down to five that I wanted to focus on for the entire year, okay. which is odd for a lot of people. A mm -hmm. lot of people are trying to achieve so much within a year. For sure. So of all those goals, I remember seeing a lot of goals that had to do with family and children mm -hmm. and husband and marriage and finance and love. And I couldn't circle them as my top goals for the year because there's a lack of control. I can't control that. There you go. Yeah. So work is so objective. Yes. Whereas our love lives are so subjective. Right. And a lot of women, actually, I've mentored women um, when it comes to careers or building a brand or how to represent yourself or how to um, how to, you know, um, handle yourself in media and things like that. But there are women that have started to come to me for relationship advice ever since I took a leap and um, jumped into reality TV. Mm -hmm. I think when when they see me on TV, they see Corvea is beautiful. She has high standards. She has her, her crap together. Mm -hmm. She got it going on. What man wouldn't want her, right? Mm -hmm. And when I when I when I get approached by women asking for dating advice, I can tell you how to have some high standards now. I can mm -hmm. tell you how to um, what to expect from a man or how to go on a great date or how to get value from a date or how to see if a man is worth your time. But I cannot tell you um, how to succeed in your relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not up to us totally Correct. because another person is involved. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my career, it's Corvea's choices, Corvea's consequences. When it comes to a relationship, you're considering somebody else. You have to take into account how you guys mesh, um, how you guys communicate, all those things. So, I see, I see some synergy, though, in our careers and our relationships. How so? Because also in your career, you have to be considerate of other people. Yeah, uh-huh. You have to be considerate of how you speak to them. Mm -hmm. You have to be considerate of how, the conversations you have. You have to be considerate of your body language, your energy, For sure. uh, the sustainability of the relationship, the assessing on if the relationship is valuable to you right. or not. Every day in a relationship, you have to ask yourself, is this what I want? Right. And if it is something that you want, you continue with that it's relationship. A it's yes. a choice. Mm -hmm. You commit yourself to it the same way you can marry a man or I can marry a woman you can choose to marry your career or not. Some people just show up right. to work and just show up and just they don't they on autopilot. Yeah, they leave it. They, they leave mm -hmm. at four o'clock and they go home. Right. Versus some people also do that in a relationship. Yeah. They on autopilot with autopilot within their relationship, or some people yeah. are overly invested in their relationship. They're married to their relationship and they are really really have genuine care about how their relationship is going. Right. Right. They're fine tuning it, and so. I'm on the fundamental belief that all laws in the universe can be applied to attract our career or they can and they can be applied to attract the woman or man of our dreams. Right, right. It's all about the visualization and removing yourself from the equation so that you don't get in your own way. Yeah. I actually look forward to as much as I pour into my career, right? I really look forward to pouring that level of like intricacy and detail and mm -hmm. thought and care into a relationship like a intimate personal romantic relationship mm -hmm. um and i've done it i've i've dipped right and mm -hmm. I've, I've tapped into that and i've had relationships and so it's it's almost heartbreaking to think of how much went into a relationship that's not successful that's where mm -hmm. the pain and the heartbreak come mm -hmm. come from you invest so much into this relationship mm -hmm. into this person you're choosing this person every day now the relationship is no longer there. You're grieving the relationship mm -hmm. all of a sudden. Um, I don't have to worry about that with my career. Mm -hmm. I've I've grieved job. I've been laid off. I had to had to grieve that. I've walked away from a company. I had to like kind of grieve that mm -hmm. loss. But it's not the same as you know walking away from a relationship. Um, so I do see some synergy there. But I think for a woman, 
as emotional as we are, mm -hmm. right? As emotionally driven as we are, there's like a level of emotion and pain that you experience in and out of relationships that you don't feel in and out of work. So it's almost like for women nowadays, I mean, when we think about black women, we're spending the most, we're building the most businesses. Um, we're entrepreneurs. We're so successful. We're everything mm -hmm. our ancestors wanted us to be mm -hmm. at this point. It's also our safe place and our comfort zone because mm -hmm. we have control there. Correct. So when we walk away from a business or we walk away from a job, it doesn't hurt as much as when we have to walk away from a relationship, relationship or a man. Pure Soul Restaurant in Durham, North Carolina is one of the best plant-based restaurants in the country. Plant-based everything. Whether you are 100% plant-based or flexing your diet, Pure Soul has amazing options for everyone. With majority of the foods being locally sourced from Pine Knot Farms, a small business with sustainable practices, you taste the North Carolina love and soul through every bite. Family, Pure Soul isn't trying to convince you, they are trying to feed you. Stop by Pure Soul in Durham and tell them Black Fly on the Wall sent you. Um, so it's 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 I'm happy in my career. I look forward to, you know, pouring into a relationship the way that I pour into my career. It just really has to be the right. It has to be a safe place for me. That's the same way your career has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like your relationship has to be safe so that you can be the most vulnerable you. Yeah. Yeah. Because like when you yeah. leave your job or you have stressors outside of work or just life journey you want to make sure that your relationship is a safe place and yeah. a safe haven oh for you so true um and I'm, I'm a fundamental believer that we can attract and build the life that we desire oh yeah and i'm a major i'm a major advocate of the generative principle of care mm -hmm. what we care about is what we experience in our reality mm -hmm. a lot of times and not just you i mean i've been i've had i've had stages in my life where I truly did not care about a relationship, so I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about it. Right, right. The universe brings to us what we care about, yep. what we consistently what we think about water and nurture. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a quote that says, "A man and woman is who they think of is is what they think about all day long." Every day. Mm -hmm. So all day long, you have people out here that are married, that are mothers, that are fathers, that are husbands, that are wives. Because well, call me a mother because I think about my babies every there day. There you go. And I don't even have any. <laughs> You will, you will one day be one. Yes, of because course. it's it's what is what is what you consistently yeah. water in your um in your makeup, but it's also about allowing boundlessness in your relationships. Yeah, yeah. That means that you can't, we can't create boundaries associated to what a person looks like. No, their religion, their creed, their uh how their height their body size, any of that, because you, you don't know exactly what the universe is attracting no. to you. None of it's my, only, it's only, it's only reflecting what you think. Yes. None of my standards for men or relationships or none of my non-negotiables have anything to do with how tall they are, how they look, how they speak. None of that. It's all about how I feel. And if I'm putting myself in a position to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and feel safe. So or would you classify yourself as somebody who is ready to be in a relationship that is giving to them? 100%. That is fulfilling to them? Yeah. That, uh, that allows you to be a woman that is free in her thinking, in her speech? Yeah. Um, even like I'm a fundamental believer, like, you know, my, fi my fiance is here, you know, with my business. <laughs> Did you just say my fine fiance? <laughs> oh, she fine too. But, uh, you know, she, 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 she's here. I heard it. I heard you it come out. Saying? She's gorgeous. She's here. Um, yeah. but you know, like I value our relationship at the same rate. I value my business and I value my business a lot. A lot. Nice. Nice. And she'll tell you. So you give, you give both that oh, same amount of care and I it shows, to. it shows. I have to because I had the desire of being a husband. Mm-hmm. And I had the desire of have being a father and I had the desire of initiating a family structure around me that will allow me to a be have those roles yeah. and being a father yeah. and being a husband, but also to have the role of operating a business that has a solid family structure. Right. And that is one of the principles um, in Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill is for a man to have a supportive wife. Yeah. And a lot of times when you look at, not all the time, of course, nothing is um, absolute, but when you look across the industry, 
of men and women that are, and specifically you can look at men because I'm a man, um, they have this family structure of being in a stable home, and that stable home starts with your woman. Mm -hmm. Like the woman is the foundation for a man to be successful. Yep. No matter where you look at it, any successful man, you look at the successful man, yep. you will find successful, you will find women around him that support him, whether they're daughters, mm -hmm. wives, so true. mothers, so true. friends, colleagues, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Women are the found cornerstone right. of a man's success. Right. And man, can man achieve without a woman? Yes. Sure. He just makes his life harder. Yep. Versus if you really are allowed to have a confidant, somebody who is um, there, your your cheerleader, your who champion what you do, who provides you feedback, who corrects you when you need to be corrected. If men put their focus directly on and, and align their focus of their business with the focus of their love life to make sure that their love life is also giving of them, then you can find Speak. true I hope, success. I hope there are so many men watching this <laughs> that so are like, listening to that. So like I've developed, so just studying and reading so a few books over the last month is that, you know, success is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Mm -hmm. So you, when you look at your life, you have to ask yourself, am I successful in my business life? That's mm -hmm. a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So what is the ideal that you have within your business? And is it progressing mm -hmm. in such a rate that is idealistic to you. Right. And you have to apply that same definition to your love life. Right. Is that success in my relationship is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Mm -hmm. What is the ideal? What is the philosophy? What is the ideology of my relationship? And is it progressive? Is it progressively moving in the direction that I'm proud of? Right. And then you can say, yes, my relationship is successful. Right. But a lot of times we take the principles of the universe and we apply those to our career mm -hmm. and our careers. Boom. You can see the trajectory. Right. Like you, you're 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 probably somebody who's going to be a CEO of a Fortune 500 company just based on your trajectory and the work that you put in. Mm -hmm. But you also have the ability because there's no limits and it's boundless to being also being a wife and a mother. 100 percent. Because it's all about what you care about and what you water and what right. you consistently give. And I would say, you know, to your question, am I ready? Um, I would say yes, because even though I'm a student forever, mm -hmm. right, I'm constantly learning about myself, the mm -hmm. ways of the world, the ways of the spirit, all those mm -hmm. things. There are there there have been some core values that have developed inside of me based on some experiences. So I've been in relationships where there there have been things that came up from my childhood even mm. that I never addressed, never recognized, never knew of that I had to. Now, now I'm faced with it. Mm -hmm. And because I'm the type of person that I um, love this idea of progressing and being a better woman, mm -hmm. I have to face it now. I'm For not sure. going to sweat, you know, sweep that under the rug, For sure. but you know, once I face it and I recognize it now, my values change and my values developed. And there have been some core things that I have recognized and experienced and had to deal with and heal from. And I feel like that's what makes me ready to be in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, I just know that all the work that I put in to heal, to learn, to unlearn, that has to, that can only mesh well with someone who respects that and values that. For sure. Anyone who continues to dig into those areas would not be the person for me, right? For sure. um, so I would say that I'm ready, and I think that you 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 said a lot. You said a lot that that I I hope you know men and women hear and listen to, so that they understand that you know you can have what you want. You can in have a your relationship, heart's desire in a job, in mm -hmm. all of those things. In, so, in your health. In your health. It's like, it's. Yeah. A, I think we have to, we have to shift how, we talked about success, but we have to shift how we think a life of abundance looks like. Yeah. It's yeah. not only our career. It's not. Because what is it to gain a successful career and don't have anybody to share it with? Don't have anybody to motivate you right. to go to the next level. There has to be a divine focus of aptitude that is applied to attracting the man and woman that you want. Mm -hmm. There has to be focus of that. Sure. And and I think right now a lot of the self-help books are focused on, you know, attracting your dream life, get in the car, get in the house, 
getting the career. But yes, imagine if that same blueprint was laid on top of relationships. Yeah. I mean, I say this all the time. I, you know, I say this all the time as this career woman, right? You have to design, think about the life that you want and design your life and then choose a job or a career that fits into that. Mm -hmm. You don't choose a job or a career and then design your life around that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Your career is, should never be your North Star. Mm -hmm. Just like people shouldn't do that in relationships. Right. Even right. business partners. Right. Like you shouldn't choose a business partner and then try to design your business around the business partner. No. You should choose your business and then choose a business partner that Based flows on, well with your business. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Like you choose the life, like Corvea chooses the life that she lives. Mm -hmm. And then you chose in your life and now a partner within your relationship realm is going to mesh directly into that because it's all in this, it's all synergy. It's all intertwined with mm -hmm. one another, mm -hmm. right? And uh, my fiance is a big advocate of writing it down. That's her thing. <laughs> so like <laughs> she's a plain. big advocate of like write down your dream person. Write down your yeah. dream woman. Write down your dream man. And by you putting that out into the universe, you will attract it to you. Right. You just have to make sure that you have your eyes open whenever it comes. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, that you're, you know, for me it's about I know what my dream man looks like. I've mm -hmm. written it down a thousand times. It's about, it's not about finding him. It's about being in position. Yeah. So that when he to arrives, right, I know how to receive him. Mm -hmm. I know how to welcome him and greet him and as you, a woman. And, and there has to be an identifier. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. There has to be an identifier. Because we, we, we meet people all the time, but there has to be an identifier that triggers in your consciousness that this is the person mm -hmm. that I've attracted to me. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't always come in the form of, you are in the grocery store and you bump into somebody like on a Lifetime movie and it's like, boom, oh, this is the person that I wrote down. Mm -hmm. Like we was talking about it with, with Lou earlier about the identifiers of what anxiety looks like. Okay. So now that you know what the identifiers of what anxiety looks like, you now cannot label something as having anxiety. Oh, yeah, for because sure. you Because you're not really focused on the anxiety. You're focused on the identifiers. This is A, B, C, D. Okay, right. this is anxiety. Right. It's the same thing with your dream person. A, B, C, D, this is my dream person. Yep. Oh, buddy that looks a certain way or she looks a certain type of way, but it's not A, B, C, D. That's not, that's not, those, those are not identifiers that you correlate your dream person with. Yeah. Um, before we wrap this up, I was going to ask you, we was talking about reading and books and ideologies and all that. It's like, what book do you recommend for individuals to allow them to see themselves um, living a boundless life. Is there a book that motivates you? Um, there's so many. There's so many. Um, it's so. Ma there's so many. I think there's so many levels to this, mm -hmm. to being boundless and to like removing limitations from your mind and your mm -hmm. thinking. But I would start with a book like The Power of Now. Mm -hmm. The Power of Now is a great book. Mm -hmm. It's not unique to me though. I think you can find books out there. That fit it's, your it's reading a powerful style. One. It's a powerful one. Yeah, could totally no but joke. But the concept, right? You can find that in other books. It's all based on your reading style. Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of times we're giving book recommendations, not remembering that everybody has a different reading mm -hmm. style, right? But if you could find a book that you like that has the same concept of the power of mm -hmm. now, recognizing the power of the living, breathing moment that mm -hmm. you're in right now, mm -hmm. I think that that will set you up to have a good foundation mm -hmm. for not limiting yourself from any thing in any area of your life, whether mm -hmm. it's career, your relationships, whatever it is. I've had to practice that a lot. A lot of times when you're thinking about being successful, reaching goals, you're losing the moment. Mm -hmm. You're not living in the moment because you're already thinking about what's next. I've struggled with that a lot. Absolutely. Once I started paying attention to the living, breathing moment and caring about my breath and thanking my heart for beating and thanking my body for taking in oxygen and letting out oxygen every day, mm -hmm. I think that I became a lot more successful. Absolutely. And I became a lot more, like, for lack of better words, I stopped giving a fuck about what people thought. Mm -hmm. Because I'm healthy, I'm here, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. This is all that matters in this moment. Correct. That's a practice that I think takes some effort and some work. 
So The Power of Now is a book I would recommend for a foundation. Um, and that has to be applied. The Power of Now is dynamic because yeah. mindfulness has to be applied in every breath. Every breath. Every yeah. breath, every moment, every uh, situation, every experience. You're mindful in that. You're not worried about the future. You're not concerned with the past. 100%. You're, you're specifically focused on the now. And uh, I, I love uh, The yeah. Power of Now. And I love his next book, uh, A New Earth. It's good. That, that yeah. A New Earth is, there's, is dynamic. There's another book um, that I keep. I will never give this book away. It's called Letters to a Young Sister by Hill Harper. Okay. And I read that book when I was 14. I read it again in my 20s. I read it again in my 30s. And it is a great book. There's a lot of essays in there from a lot of black successful women that we know. And I think that's a good book for women specifically when we're talking about, you know, not not putting limits on your life because you are hit with the words of women from all walks of life. And you're also getting um, a man's perspective of what it looks like to what it looks like from his point of view to be this like woman of a man's dreams. Mm -hmm. It's not all about how she looks. It's not all about her career. There's all these intangibles, all sure. these things about her soul and her, her spirit that he's identifying For sure. that make you think, Oh my gosh, there's a part of me there. There's mm -hmm. a part of me there. You start to identify with some mm -hmm. of these words in that book. I love that book. I like that. Another one. Um, there's a small book called, um, the Magic Path of Intuition by a woman named Florence Shovel Shin. Okay. It's an interesting read. It was written in the 30s, but the concept is so real and so true and so raw. And she's basically talking you through how to listen to your intuition. It's okay. the same thing with, you know, we go to church and we're we're listening to the pastor tell us to, to listen to the Holy Spirit. It's mm -hmm. similar to that where we, we have to learn how to trust ourselves or trust God, the God in us. And with the ma magic path of intuition, um, she will actually give you affirmations to repeat to yourself or to think to yourself. I'm a big proponent that of I think, Yeah, that I think open you up to a life without limits. So it could be something as small as you don't know where the next dollar is going to come from, but you go out and you buy yourself a meal anyway with mm -hmm. your last dollar because you you trust in in your spirit, in your heart, in your body that the next dollar is going to come. Absolutely. And with you going out and buying that meal with no money, you are putting in that work, right? Faith without, faith without works is dead. For sure. So you're saying to yourself, I'm not going to worry about the, la the next dollar. I'm going to use my last dollar to buy this meal and I'm going to continue to be fed. That faith is going to produce more meals. There you go. So that's a good book I recommend as well. I like, I like all three, man. Yeah. I'm going to have to check out all three. <laughs> yes. Man, but this has been an amazing conversation. Thank you uh, so much. Establishing boundaries and expectations is all about Identifying yourself as dynamic, boundless, uh, setting those boundaries as as enormous as possible, dreaming, living your dream life in mm -hmm. the now so that whenever the future comes, you achieve that, you're manifesting that. Yep. Um, relationships, applying the code, the framework mm -hmm. to those relationships, to your um, business life, to your career, to your relationships with your family, friends, and always making sure that you find equity. Yeah. In those relationships. Right. Um, and, and, and always make sure that you're you're receiving at the same rate that you're giving. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you. Thank Much you. gratitude. Uh, supremely grateful for you being here for this conversation. I learned a lot. Um, <laughs> so and I always I. like to surround myself with, with people who, who who can pour into my cup and I can pour into theirs. And we can have an amazing conversation about something that is that can impact our, our culture in a positive way. Yeah. So, um. Thank you for coming to Black Fly on the Wall. Thank Mental you for having so I appreciate me. you. Thank you. Much love. <laughs>